Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. What I'm really afraid of and what we've been seeing is that um, you're seeing a lot of censorship now. You're seeing like a destruction of history. Um, you're seeing... Uh, a lot of things, intimidation, mm -hmm. uh, and that's really what what really bothers us. You know, I know Johanna's been seeing that. She she interacts with a lot of people on a daily basis more than I do uh, mm -hmm. in her industry, so she sees it and it really like concerns her. You know, even yesterday she was talking with some her somebody that she knew. Do you hear about what's going on in Seattle? No, I didn't even know about that. They're talking about uh, you know more protests and how you know the president is racist or something like that. Or how COVID-19 is doesn't affect you uh, if you're in a protest, but if you hang out in a group with a group of friends, oh no, that's terrible. You can't do that. Or if you go to church, you can't do that either. You're going to spread COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So it's just inevitable that I think either direction it goes, people are going to be pissed off because I don't see how people on I guess we'll call it the right, um, like good law-abiding people, like let's say the people that they're they're typically conservative. Um, they listened to all the COVID-19 rules. They wore the mask. They believed all that. They closed down their business. They lost a lot of money, but they said, you know what? I'm going to do this for the good of the country because that's what the president mentioned and that's what the news is saying. So I'm going to do it for, for the greater good or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they see all the data come back and the who going back and saying, well, maybe asymptomatic spread wasn't a big deal. So, well, then why did we have the lockdowns? Uh, oh, but you can protest, uh, but you can't go to church, even though your church has like 50 people and this protest has like 20,000. And I think even those people are going to reach a point where they go crazy and they go out and riot if, if, uh, if you know, the left were to win and say there's a second wave, we're going to shut down again. Mm -hmm. And, just, so and just, just, just think about this. Right now, it's only really the left getting all crazy. I don't yeah. have any problem with the people that are protesting what happened to George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. You know, mm -hmm. there's been other issues. I don't have any problem with that, right? I mean, us as gun guys, we protest things, yeah. you know. But really, right now, what we see happening out there, I don't think it's just Antifa. We probably have people from different sides yeah. trying to agitate this thing. Um, but, you know, the people in our camps that we're in, which gun guys, right? pro second amendment uh people that believe in the constitution you know uh libertarians <laughs> whatever wherever you might see yourself if you're looking at this and you've been looking at us you know we're probably somewhere in a bucket right yep we're not actually doing anything yet we're not even in it yet but if you think about all this this is the freaking prelude to the hunger games yep <laughs> well i i found something and i posted it the other day uh it was something that the Soviet Union used during the Cold War, and it really caught my eye because they mentioned that they used memes, which obviously memes are more popular now than ever. But like, obviously, the KGB tried to recruit people to be spies and infiltrate the government and the military. Mm -hmm. But they also tried to infiltrate like the arts and obviously the education system, which mm -hmm. I would say they were successful. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that they tried to promote were I've got this list. It says, see if this all sounds familiar to you if you guys have listened to some of the things that BLM or Antifa or the left has said. There's no truth, only competing agendas. All Western and American claims to moral superiority over communism and fascism are, are completely invalid because of uh, Western racism and colonialism. There's no objective standards with which you can judge one culture to be better than the other. And anybody who claims that one culture can be better is an oppressor. The prosperity of the West is built on exploitation of the third world. Uh, crime is uh, the fault of society and not individuals. The poor are victims and the criminals are victims. And only victims are virtuous. And, but if you're rich, you can gain virtue by identifying with the poor. If you're a virtuous person, violence and war are never justified. It's always better to be a victim than to fight. But if you're oppressed, you're allowed to use violence. And when you're confronted with terror, the only moral course for a Westerner is to apologize for past sins, understand uh, the point of view of the terrorist or whoever has their grievance and make concessions. Mm -hmm. So that that was 
basically straight out of the KGB. And that sounds like a lot of what Antifa does and a lot of the left pushes that everything is invalid in the U.S. Yeah, it sounds like a playbook that these guys are playing from. Marco, do you want to jump in on this or yeah. are you? Are you on- yeah, no. Um, so mm-hmm. like, so like one of the things is, you know, that, that we talked about pre-show, you know, like that we always say, it's like, so what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? And I, I told Hank that I wanted to talk about some of the quotes that I've seen mm-hmm. that have yes. stuck with me out of this. And, and I'm guessing that's where mm-hmm. Pierre Pistoletto, you know, like probably pulled that one up and glad, yep. he, glad he did. But um, mm-hmm. one of the ones, and, and, and I can't remember if, if, if you read this Sean King quote, and, yeah. and I, know, I, I know it's got repeated on there. It's stop generically telling us to vote in response to all the police brutality we have right now. Mm-hmm. Yes, we should vote, but we have to be very specific. Democrats from top to bottom are running the cities with the worst police brutality in America right now. We voted for them. Mm-hmm. So, yes, like when you read the meme, it it might resonate with you. Like this was mm-hmm. actually sent to me from a very so that's friend. that's a quote from Sean King, the guy that was part of uh, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter. Is that who you're talking about? I believe, yeah, he's mm-hmm. he's like the super light skin dude. That yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, either super light skin or not even he's, black he's, at he's all. White. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's white. However you, yeah, <laughs> whatever you it want to like, identify so it, as. It was it was sent to me from a super super liberal. I'm talking about like a burning supporter, mm-hmm. like you know, left friend of mine, mm-hmm. and like he sent it to me. So my whole thing is, I keep sending it to him back like once a week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. just because, yes, you read the meme, and yes, the quote resonated. I haven't seen anyone read that out loud on CNN. And I, and, and like, so usually, like, in times like this, I like to watch CNN and MSNBC because I want to see what they're saying. I don't mm-hmm. care about what Fox is saying right now. Mm-hmm. I care about what MSNBC and, C- and, and CNN are saying because those are going to be the more influential channels to, to the greater public. Mm-hmm. None of them have quoted this guy on that. None of them have even brought up this fact whatsoever. So at least with that particular friend, I'm just trying to keep that quote that he sent me that he thought resonated with him mm-hmm. in his mind consistently. And on election day, I will send it to him like 50 times. Just so that's what, yeah, you, yeah, go ahead. you gotta encourage the seeds, man. That's yeah. what you have to do. When, when people figure it out their own, that's more powerful than persuading them yeah. sometimes. So here, here's my thing, like, that I think about all of this, you know. Um, we have to ask ourselves, like, exactly where are we going here, right? I'm not, I don't really want to be a conspiracy theorist. I don't want to be doom and gloom. But if you're looking at a, if you're looking at what's happening in America right now and you realize that there's no leaders, there are leaders, but they're sitting on the fence. So there's, so there's technically no leaders here. Everyone's sitting back. You have to ask yourself what you really want. Like, I get it why people are upset about George Floyd, and that's definitely something that we need to actually handle. But what are we doing right now? What is the purpose of this? If we're trying to erase... The American ideal, the reason why my family came here, you guys, you know, I, I don't think, yeah. I think we're all from different countries, you know, yeah. although like, I think you've said this before, Rolando, you know, Puerto Rico is part of America, yeah. technically. Yeah, <laughs> but, but we, we, we treat ourselves as like our own thing. It's like yeah. Texas on Yeah, uh, it's on not, steroids. it's not a state. It's not a state <laughs> yeah. at this point, exactly. right? So, um. And we can get into that whole debate at some other mm-hmm. time. But why did our families, why did we come here? We came here because of the ideal of America. It doesn't have to yeah. be perfect, but if we erase that, then we might as well be living anywhere else in the world. Exactly. You know, we might as well be living in, in a third world country on the brink of war. But once yeah. people really, if like our leaders have to decide if they really want to push this over the line like that. Because once you go to a certain part of this, you can't take it back. Mm-hmm. Okay, once once other that like I'm not saying we're there now, but once we get other people engaged in this, there's actually no going back. No, you know, and it's very yeah, dangerous. This is almost this is almost like deliberate to me. You shut it, down oh, you is. shut down the whole planet, including America, over the flu. Okay, maybe an extremely virulent form of the flu. But a, a form of the flu that's taken out 100,000 people in a country with 370 million. Mm-hmm. Right? So yep. you shut down everything. You put hospitals on the brink. Hospitals. The one time when you want the hospitals up and running and dealing with everyone, you go, no, nah, don't take any patients. You don't wait to see how many patients go in and all that. You shut it down. You do all these other things to economically kill businesses. And then behind that, you have this. Right. If someone doesn't step up to lead at some point, we, we, we're going to go too far. And once we go there, 
There is no more what your job is. It's like I, I've always said to people, what would you do if the president got on TV right now and said, guess what? Aliens are real. They're our overlords. Are you going Are you going to work tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So just yeah. think about that. If all of a sudden people, we, we don't need everyone in America to, to realize that. It really doesn't take that many people to say, you know what? Oh, I think we crossed that line. Then mm -hmm. we're in a completely we're in a completely different place, you know. All right. Well, just because you said the the simple fact of numbers, I'm gonna give you guys my second quote that's really stuck with me. Okay. And you can be on either side of the argument, mm -hmm. and it has perspective, mm -hmm. no matter what side of the argument you're on, and it's probably gonna make a few people mad. Mm -hmm. But the quote goes: If a small percentage of looting rioters discredits an entire movement, then what does a small percentage of bad cops do? Mm -hmm. Say that again. Let me hear it again. If a small percentage of looting rioters discredits an entire movement, mm -hmm. then what does a small percentage of bad cops do? Mm -hmm. yeah, I've heard that one. Mm -hmm. it, who is, it, who, who is that? The yin and the yang. It's yeah. like it's, you have a few number of bad protesters mm -hmm. slash rioters. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, was it, it? we're on, what, day 14? Only four days were probably really riots. Mm -hmm. um, did they mess up a lot of property? Yes. Was it... A hundred people out of ten thousand? Yes. I I think I think the biggest issue that people had, I think every most people would agree with that. I think the line that was crossed was when you heard, like, let's say, in my own experience, my own wife ran into a, uh, a coworker of hers that told her a lot of people abuse the quote from uh, from Martin Luther King saying that uh, rioting is the is the I believe the voice of the. The yeah, of, the of the unheard. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of people, you know, kind of took that's part of an entire speech that he wrote. So you mm -hmm. need to take the entire context of that. But she said something very profound to my wife. And it was ironic that, you know, we're both Hispanic. And obviously her parents immigrated to the United States and went through a lot of difficulty to get here. It's like, well, people like you, this was coming from another Hispanic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, need to feel uncomfortable because not everybody in, not everybody in this country gets to live with privilege or with you know you know having nice things or things like that and i heard one of the city council members from minnesota say the same thing mm -hmm. when a cnn reporter asked her well what happens if somebody's breaking into your house you want to call the police and you've defunded the police and she didn't answer the city councilwoman didn't answer the question she said the same thing well there are people that are experiencing this d discomfort right now so basically, it's the so whole socialism. We all need to have collective misery together. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough that America is the first country that has a, that well had a middle class that was like seventy percent of the population. It's no, no. If it's not a hundred percent of the population that are with prosperity, then a hundred percent have to suffer. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much how the left works. Yeah. So that sounds like a that sounds that like a so, communist manifesto right there. Yeah. So I would agree with that, except for they, they, you know, they they basically condoned it. And there were a lot of people in the riots that said, well, it's OK that they did that. They have to do it because, you know, they lack the privilege to, you know, have physical, you know, that's how they level the playing field. Sure. So I was I was mm -hmm. I agreed with that until I heard the media and people saying that. Then I was like, no, I don't buy that anymore. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, and, and then also, I mean, if we, I, if I we mean, take I if we, the protest. If we take a look at the at other places on this planet, we can go to places on this planet that are run by Latinos. Yeah. The majority of the population are Latinos. The people who run everything are Latinos. The politicians, the police, the military, all Latinos. And we could find places worse than America. Mm -hmm. Okay? We can go to places on this planet where everyone is black. Same, same thing like what I just said, and we can find places that are worse than America, okay? So, <laughs> we could do that with Asian. Uh, to be honest with you, we could do that if you want to go if you want to go all the way there. We could do that with, with people who are white, whatever the definition of that is, right? So, this is the reason why I think it's very dangerous to start flushing what America is supposed to be down the drain because... These things are happening. It's very dangerous to do that. It's not to say that there's not things going. Of course, there's things going on. 
but then we can't act at the same time like things aren't going. It's like, so I, I saw stuff on the news about people in Nigeria where I lived. I lived in Nigeria. No one could tell me about it, right? I lived there. And I saw people over there protesting this George Floyd thing. Okay, yesterday I, I saw something in the news that the Boko Haram, which are Nigerians, killed 800 people in Nigeria, which are Nigerians. These are all Africans killing Africans. But yet, when this thing was going on, because it's cool all around the world now, we're all one small planet, everyone's like, oh yeah, Black Lives Matter. Up until, uh, until that, you know, a black person decides to kill a black person. You know, th that, this- Quick question, quick- Go ahead. Quick question. Mm -hmm. did, uh, did we ever get our girls back from Boko Haram? Because I still don't know if we did. Which girl? That, like, that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, were, yeah, like, that they kidnapped the school girls. Yeah, that's a constant ongoing situation. So sometimes they but get them back. That's what I'm trying to say yeah. is, that, is that that was like a flash in the pan. Now, not to discredit George mm -hmm. Floyd, that, but it, like it is one life. It is, mm -hmm. it, it is a systemic problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, what was it? Like 200 girls went missing and we don't even know if we got them back. Like, like no one knows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, we, we didn't get some of them back. We got some of them back. They keep going after these guys. Boko Haram. Boko Haram was around in Nigeria when I lived there as a kid. Um, you know, these guys are going around and burning down entire villages because of what their uh, religious beliefs are. But we could find we could find Latino uh, countries in, on this planet where the same thing's happening. That oh, it's run yeah. by, by gangs and, and all this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We could find that. So, oh, yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, is that there's nowhere that's perfect and America is definitely not perfect. But if we all of a sudden, like, we are different, we stand out from the rest of the world. Yep. Okay, I'm not just trying, I'm not like, you know, I'm not randomly saying that to you guys. I was, well, I was born in a third world country and I've lived in a few countries around the planet and I've yep. been there. I'm, I'm not just saying this. If we flush it down the toilet, we are never getting it back. I was going to say that, yeah, as somebody who's lived in different countries, too, and traveled, I think that's the problem. A lot of Americans don't realize how good it is, and they can't – they've been taught that you can't accept – it's like I, – I use the extreme example of, okay, if Adolf Hitler's in front of you and he tells you, don't touch the stove, it's on, it's going to burn you – just because it's Adolf Hitler, are you going to be like, I can see that it's hot. I'm still going to do it because you're Hitler and I and I hate you so much that even though you're giving me a definitive fact, I refuse to listen to it. And that's the problem. That's kind of where we're at, where one, one it, the, it, the sides have become so, especially one side, the left especially, has just become so extreme that they don't want to negotiate. They've taught you that everything is wrong and it's almost become like a cult. You know, the, the fringe elements of the left are cultish mm -hmm. because it really is almost like a religion. If you say the wrong thing, that's like a sin. Then you have to repent. You have to repudiate everything. You have to apologize and and embarrass yourself in front of everybody, mm -hmm. whether that's chanting in front of a crowd, washing people's feet like we've seen or you lose your job. You know, some, mm -hmm. you know, and any one of those things, there's there's different levels of sin and different uh, kind of uh, uh, atonements that you can have, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.